Hey, welcome to Live at Noon. This is Dee Dee Jones. We're talking about documents. We are buried in documents, aren't we all? There's documents that are printed. There's documents that are electronic. There's documents we still have and documents we've lost. Today, we're going to talk about important documents in your life, four basic areas of documents, um, what they are, how long to keep them, and keep in mind, everything we're talking about today applies to you, might apply to your kids, depending on how old they are, and it might apply to other important aging people in your world. So without further ado, let's get started. And as I frequently offer, if you reach out to us, we can give you this checklist of all these documents to help you keep track. But let's go over the list, give it a nice 30,000 foot view so you can get a sense of which documents in your life you need to be keeping and maybe which ones can you shred or just get rid of. So we're going to start with near and dear to my heart, the tax documents. So the first question is, are you preparing, you know, sending in taxes? Not everybody has to, which is kind of interesting. But if you are um, filing taxes, you need to keep them for at least three years. If you have a situation where, you know, some states require that you keep them longer, California is an example of one of those. If there's a situation where you think you may have forgotten to report more than 25% of your income, you better keep those tax returns for six years. They, the IRS calls that significant fraud and has a longer um, term where they can go backwards on that. And if you're claiming a loss for worthless securities or bad debt, you need to keep um, records on that for seven years. So it depends on what's happening in your financial life, how long you need to keep those. If you've made taxable gifts or received an inheritance, you'll want to keep the forms 709 that you filed and any 8971s or 706s that were issued to you. Keep those permanently. I know I hate saying that you have to keep it forever, but some stuff you just do. Let's shift gears a little bit. Healthcare documents. As if taxes weren't creating piles and piles of documents, healthcare certainly is doing that to all of us these days. Um, Will you be applying for Medicaid, perhaps to a long-term care situation? This isn't going to apply to a lot of you, but for those of you that it does apply to, this is absolutely critical. Medicaid is going to look backwards for five years on all of your financial transactions. So if you think there might be a Medicaid application in your future, you need to start saving those documents so that at the point of application, you can go back five years and document how your money flowed through your life. HSAs. Now I've talked a little, look at our other recording on this topic to tell you why it's important. But from the moment you open up that HSA, save every single receipt. You can use them in very powerful and creative ways down the road if you need to. So keep those receipts on file if you've got an HSA. If you wrote off medical expenses on those tax returns we've already spoken about, you need to keep those receipts as long as you're keeping the tax return. In fact, conveniently, maybe throw them all in the same file together, be it electronic or real life paper. If you're on Medicare, you'll want to hold on to your Medicare summary notices for at least a year or at least until your bill is paid in full. If you're not dealing with Medicare yet, this will sound like gibberish, that's okay. Someday you'll be on Medicare and it'll be very, very relevant. If you're enrolled in an employer drug plan that it's considered creditable, so these are the folks that are age 65 and over, you'll want to keep your annual notice of credit, creditable coverage. That's a hard word for me, sorry. Creditable coverage provided by your employer. Um, come time when you apply for Part D, um, you'll need to have those letters in hand. Shift gears again, area number three legal documents. First, are you a U.S. citizen? If so, keep your, uh, your original social security card if you have it or copies and copies of birth certificates and passports permanently. If you're a foreign national, you'll want to keep all the documents related to your entrance into the U.S., such as a passport, green card, or an I-94. Legally, do you have an estate plan? If you don't, get one. But um, if you've got an estate plan, Keep a copy of your will, trusts, powers of attorney, that's going to be general and healthcare, living will, and beneficiary designations on file. Store the originals in a very safe place, fireproof if possible. Um, and also consider giving copies to people that play an important role in your plan, such as your agents, executors, and trustees. 
How about married? If you're married, you want to be sure that you keep your marriage certificate on file. It might be needed in case of a name change, proof of marriage for insurance, or even getting a mortgage. If you've got a prenup, store that one as well. If you've been divorced, same advice. Keep those divorce papers on file. Um, they will may be relevant when it comes time to file for Social Security, believe it or not. If you've been in the military, be sure to keep your discharge papers. You may be eligible for benefits down the road. If you have a safety deposit box, and here's the thing, we're seeing fewer and fewer of these, but if you have one, you need to make sure that someone near to you and who might be monitoring your estate has the ability to get access to that safety deposit box. We find it very, very common that people put their will and final wishes in that safety deposit box, but if no one has access to it, you will be buried, your wishes won't be honored, and your will will still be tied up before the, anybody will be able to get access to your safety deposit box. So having secondary access to that for somebody else in your world is really, really important. And hopefully you've got investment accounts and bank accounts. Um, be sure you keep the most current statements on file, um, probably through the tax filing. Keep the end of your with your tax return. Keep it as long as you keep those tax returns. Here's a tricky one. If you have investments that you purchased in a taxable account, this do, don't have to worry about it if it's in 401ks and IRAs, but if you bought investments in tax accounts prior to 2012, you need to keep all the information on those. There was a change of law in 2012 where the custody companies have to track basis, what you paid for it, for you, 2012 forward. Anything purchased prior to that, the responsibility fell to the taxpayer. So that's that in some cases can be a whole lot of record keeping. If you have retirement accounts, which I'm sure you all do because you're showing up and learning all about this stuff, um, keep documentation on contributions and withdrawals. If you made a Roth conversion, be sure to keep the records on the conversion date. That's gonna come into play later with your taxes. Very key, if you made additional non-deductible contributions to your IRA, keep that form 8606 that you've sent in with your tax return each year. Someday when you're taking money out, those um, that amount on those 8606 forms will inform how much is gonna be taxable as you withdraw. If you don't have those, you're gonna end up paying more in taxes, so it's real important. How about you small business owners out there? Um, what things do you need to keep in addition to all the stuff we've talked about so far? You need to keep track of your federal EIN, employer identification number, business formation documents, ownership agreements, any business licenses, keep track of those, payroll records, things around employment, business asset records. Probably you can work this out with your bookkeeper when you purchase things, how much you paid for them, et cetera. And you'll want to track records on employee benefits, and things like retirement plans, health insurance, that sort of thing. How about debt? Who doesn't have debt? Um, keep the loan documents for any debt until the loan is paid off. And then I'd even keep it a year just to be sure every, all the dust settles. Related to that, how about property? What kind of property do you own? Automobiles, real estate. Keep the deeds, the titles, settlement statements, bills of sale on file. Again, someplace secure can be that safety deposit box. It can be a fireproof safe, um, a good one maybe screwed to the floor, locked somewhere. Um, keep documentation showing purchase related fees that you capitalized on file till you decide to sell the property. So this relates to assets, but it's always, always ties into taxes. Doesn't everything always come back to taxes? It's crazy. Small business owners, do you have a home office? And if you do, you're probably getting some a tax dedu deduction if you're self-employed, keep receipts for the housing and home office related expenses, utility bills, mortgage statements, et cetera, that are proving how you've calculated the home office deduction. And if related to that, if you own a home and have made improvements, be sure and track those home improvements that can save you taxes on the eventual sale of your home. You, it, you may find yourself subject to long-term capital gains. And if you've recorded the information and saved the receipts for that, you can reduce that gain at that point of sale. Do you own property in more than one state? Definitely keep documents proving what state you live in. Um, if you read the news, you'll see there's arguments all the time of what's somebody's 
state of domicile with COVID that we're dealing with now, um, that's influencing how people are being taxed as to where they're working, where they live, and their income can be significantly affected by how the taxes based on state residency can be affected. Um, and a couple of oddballs. Do you have higher education, college certifications? Keep copies, proven that you did the work. Um, you know, if you're really into it, you can frame them and put them on the wall, but definitely keep copies. If you've got insurance policies, keep the latest policy in a secure place. And finally, if you're currently employed, make sure to keep any copies of signed contracts, non-solicitation or non-compete agreements handy. Someday you may not be employed and those will come into play. So huge long list. I apologize for that, but it's a whole range of things that adulting as human beings, grown-ups, we have to keep track of those four basic areas. And within those, each one depends on your particular situation. So if you've got questions on what documents you need to keep and you'd like this list, reach out to me, Dee Dee Jones at Innovative Financial. We'll be happy to get this list out to you. And as always, thank you for joining us live at noon. Have a great day.